Hello, I'm Julia Mosier. Today's video will be about music. There are many different genres of music. This means that people's music tastes can be very diverse. We wanted to find out more about the diversity of music tastes among students and teachers in Canfield High School. Yeah, I'm Mr. Courtney and I teach English here. Um, I'm Abby Ambrose. My name is Ms. Rothbauer. I'm currently Mrs. Gibbs' long-term substitute. I'm Mr. Moldovan, Principal Canfield High School. My name is Officer Garska. I am the School Resource Officer for the Canfield High School. I'm Katie Padgett, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, my name is Brian Race. I am a Social Studies teacher here at Canfield High School. I like a lot of different music. You know, I pretty much always have something playing in my class. Uh, oldies, more modern stuff. I do have some like rap and hip hop on there. Some more like rock, hard rock kind of stuff. I think my favorite genre, the one that I probably associate myself most with would be like indie rock, a little bit of folk rock, that kind of stuff. I would say I listen to a lot of pop music, but not like today's pop music because I feel like pop music sort of like transcends over the decades. Like I listen to a lot of 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s pop. Like. I like all that kind of stuff. It's a lot of, I would say, indie, which is a very broad term, but I think in terms of indie folk or indie techno, things like that, just very uh, off the cuff and kind of strange, honestly. I think there's only two kinds of music, good and bad. So in all the genres, I really enjoy all of them. I can listen to opera, I can listen to jazz, I can listen to rock, I can listen to country, bluegrass, I just like good music. I like many genres. I do. And it depends on what I'm doing and my mood. And I like all genres of music. It's pretty broad, I'd say. Like, it goes from like indie pop, like soft stuff, and then it gets like kind of dark and kind of like kind of heavy. Uh, I'd say I have a lot of different music tastes. I'm, I'm a big fan of 70s, 80s rock, so I like the Rolling Stones, uh, U2. I like Led Zeppelin, Van Halen. Uh, my personal favorite, Bruce Springsteen. Huge Bruce Springsteen fan. Also do a little bit of Bob Dylan from time to time. Right now, my two probably most played are Glass Animals and Celine Dion. It's hard to choose, but I think if I had to choose like most diverse who I listen to most frequently and like the quantity of songs that I like, it'd probably be Michael Buble and Journey because, I don't know, Michael Bublé is like sort of more classical and Journey's like 80s soft rock, so. I don't even know if Celine Dion's still making music. She probably still is, I don't know. Um, Glass Animals is a lot more modern. You know, they just released an album in, what, 2020, I think. Uh, that album's very poppy. It still has a lot of indie rock kind of influences, but it's very pop music, you know. Um, Whereas Celine Dion's like power ballads, you know, it's like all vocals. Uh, I mean, there's instruments and stuff, but she's telling a story, and it's not so much about how catchy it is as her like belt out the notes. That's just my my childhood, and I I like that kind of rock more so than like hard rock. Now, it's not to say hard rock doesn't have its like benefits because it's nice when you're trying to get like hype for something, but I would say. Those are the main reasons. Also, Steve Perry, the lead singer of Journey, has a really interesting voice too and a really nice vocal range. Um, my favorite artist, the Avett Brothers, is very neo-folk, and I also listen to the Gorillas. They're very techno-y and electronic uh, synth music, so I would say the Gorillas and the Avett Brothers. One of my favorite artists is Andrea Bocelli. He's a famous opera singer. Uh, saw him in concert probably about 20 some years ago and uh, was just blown away by his talent. Uh, it was fantastic. And I'm a, a devout Rolling Stones fan. So I grew up with the Rolling Stones in the late 60s and 70s and 80s. Genesis, uh, growing up, my father, a lot of 80s music. Uh, Phil Collins, great singer, really enjoy him. Um, and also just from my childhood, Dr. Dre. Big influence, music. Pump, pumps me up in the gym. I think the Ava Brothers lyrics really speak to that common thread of human experience. They're, they really talk about 
those things that all of us feel, whether we want to or not, no matter where we come from, we all feel these things, and I think they do a really good job of evoking that through their lyrics. And then the gorillas, I think they give for me, in terms of instrumentals, what the Avett Brothers do. So where the Avett Brothers evoke that through their lyrics, the gorillas really use odd techniques, kind of synthy instruments, and they even use spoken word in some songs. Uh, very, very odd music. Andrea Bocelli has just an unbelievable voice. One of the voices, the greatest in the history of um, opera music that he's ever had. And the Rolling Stones are, have as many number one hits have spanned probably four or five decades you know, in their performance at the top of their top of their skill set. Because when I'm in the mood for easy listening or when I'm with my kid, you know, Genesis is great. When I'm by myself driving or working out, uh, music that gets me pumped up, Dr. Dre, it just depends on what's going on. Probably Joji and Muse. Uh, so if I were to pick two that I would say were diverse, uh, I would really say, say any of those artists, like 70s, 80s artists, Bruce Springsteen, Bob Dylan, um, versus someone like John Williams, a uh, composer. So you're not really talking about rock music or any kind of lyrical music, really. Uh, it's more orchestral. Uh, a lot of well-known movies he did the soundtracks for. I'd say that, like, Joji's pretty sad. He has a lot of emotion in his music. And they're pretty simple songs, like, on the outside, but, like, when the lyrics are, like, analyzed, there's a lot of, like, deeper meaning within what he's saying. But then when it comes to Muse, they have a lot more of instrumental tracks, like guitars and stuff. They almost like bring me back to like early 2000s, like rock, but well that sort of is what they are, but like they're also like arena rock. They also have like conceptual albums, so like they like to deal with a lot of space and like weird things, like nerdy things, so I just enjoy them. They're a lot like heavier than Joji in like uh, sound and everything. So to go to John Williams first, I would say a lot of the films, it just has a personal connection for me. It's a lot of movies that I grew up with um, when I was a kid, Star Wars, Superman, Indiana Jones, uh, a lot of themes from those movies that are pretty well known. Uh, and that's just kind of always stuck with me. Uh, and then some of the other people, Bruce Springsteen for example, uh, really find a connection to a lot of his lyrics. He really talks about kind of working class uh, experience, what it's like, that sort of thing. I think sort of growing up in this area, uh, a lot of what he has to say you can really relate to, uh, especially if you're kind of in the age range that I am. So I think as a, as a music listener, what I look for is the vocals, the lyrics. I like being able to create meaning out of that. And so for me, I, I'm more drawn to music that is, you know, like there's a reason why the words are what they are. It's not just interjections or partying kind of music or that kind of thing. So I think, I was thinking like these artists, Glass Animals and Celine Dion, they're both very, they place a lot of emphasis on the lyrics, right? And Celine's telling a story, uh, Glass Animals, their Dreamlands album, the most recent one, a lot of it's like satire and parody on modern pop music, so there's a lot of clever things you can catch in there. Um, and I think the same is true, you know, even I listen to, I wouldn't say I like follow them, but I listen to like Kendrick Lamar sometimes, or I used to listen to Chance the Rapper a lot. Uh, and I, I would say their music also lends a lot to the wordplay, the lyrics, the stories they tell. I mean, I know I mentioned that they both have really nice voices, which I appreciate. And I also appreciate how all of their songs, like even though Journey's like rock, it's not just about like, broad things. It's about like specific feelings and emotions and same with Michael Buble. Like I think they both do a really good job even though they're so different of being emotional in their own ways. I've always sort of listened to Muse. Um, the first song they, that I heard from them was Uprising and it's just always been a song that I've like listened to throughout my life because it just brings back memories. Joji's a little bit newer. I listen to it more because it brings back like I don't really know. It just makes me feel sad. And <laughs> I kind of like listening to that. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, Joji just like scratches that itch in my head, you know?